there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken It's a bird, it's a plane, it's a comet. It's literally up in the air. Scientists are evaluating images to find out whether a small part of the 4.5 billion year old space rock survived its close encounter with the sun. Some are saying that it disintegrated when it hurled towards the solar surface. Others point to a light streak continuing past the sun. So to explain it all to us is Corey Powell, editor at large, Discover Magazine. He knows this stuff better than anyone I know. Hi, Corey. <laughs> Hello. There was a lot of excitement about this. What actually happened? Well, actually, let, so let me let me back up for a second and sort of explain why people are exci excited about whether or not this this little comet is alive or dead. This this comet is really unlike anything else that we've seen before, and I've never seen astronomers quite so giddy. This is a little. This comet formed around the same time that the Earth formed, as you said, four and a half billion years ago. The Earth just went on changing, and and all the traces of that past are gone here on Earth. This comet got f flung out far off into space for, and has been in deep freeze that whole time. So this is a leftover chunk of the, of the time of the birth of the solar system, the time that the Earth formed. Um, so we're actually seeing a little time capsule here and that's why everyone w really wants to know what happened. Is, did this little time capsule, did it live, did it die, what's happening? And right now they're really scratching their heads. Did it s break off or what, what, what hurled it toward uh, the surface at this point? Why now? So ba right. So ba so basically, so this so this comet has been hanging out in deep freeze this whole time, and then it got a little nudge. We're not really sure why. Maybe from a passing star, uh, it started falling toward the sun, and by good luck, it it passed the sun right now, or passed the sun yesterday. And we have satellites, uh, we have spacecraft all around the solar system. We have telescopes all over the world that we're all watching. So even with all that, we have these amazing images. I mean, they're really quite extraordinary. But even with all that. Uh, the answer to, you know, is it alive or dead, is yes. Uh, right now, uh, there's a, you know, comets are, are very mysterious things. We see a streak, we see a cloud, we see maybe it's a tail. We don't really know quite what it is. And, you know, I think that's a, it's a good example of anybody who says, oh, we understand everything in the universe. Boy, do we not know everything in the universe. Uh, I think the thing, part of what people are so excited about is that they really can't figure out what's going on. And when you can't figure out what's going on, that means you're about to learn something really cool. And that's what I wanted to ask you. The pictures are truly amazing. Some are animations, recreations. Some are actually of this comet. What do you learn from this? Well, so like I said, you know, this, is a, this is an intact sample of the stuff that the Earth formed from. This is going to tell us uh, basically like, where did the Earth's oceans come from? Where did the atmosphere come from? Uh, why is Earth a good place for life? And are there other planets out there that would be good for life? Um, you know, there, there are a lot of big questions that have been hanging for, you know, for centuries or maybe thousands of years. Here's a way to actually get some answers. You know, they're actually picking apart, atom by atom, what was this comet made out of? What was happening in the solar system billions of years ago? And that story is in there. And the scientists are in the process of analyzing their data right now. But you know, this, this story is not over. What you'll be hearing over the next weeks and months, you may not actually hear this comet cited by name, right. but you'll be, hearing, you'll be hearing news stories like, oh, there's a new theory about how the Earth formed. Oh, there's a new idea about where the oceans came from. Oh, there's a new idea of, of how to look for life in the universe. Those right. answers are all going to be coming from this. You know, this, this story is not over. What you'll be hearing over the next weeks and months, you may not actually hear this comet 
cited by name, right. but you'll be hearing you'll be hearing news stories like, oh, there's a new theory about how the Earth formed. Oh, there's a new idea about where the oceans came from. Oh, there's a new idea of, of how to look for life in the universe. Those right. answers are all going to be coming from this. And I'm going to ask you to come back and tell us about it. It's always so interesting <laughs> to talk to you, Corey. Go out there and, and find and it. Thank you. And if, and if, and if, and if we're lucky, uh, sometime over the next week or so, you should be able to see what's left of this comet. You might need binoculars. It's probably not going to be as great okay. as we thought. But, Thank you. But it's, it's worth taking a look. Take well, care. From see you soon, Corey. To your cool story of the day, now NASA scientists making a discovery that uh, uses the Hubble Space Telescope. Could there be water on five more planets? Corey Powell's editor at large, Discover Magazine, with us in studio. How are you, my friend? Oh, uh, you know, a good a good day for I, life in the universe. Hey, what, man? What's wrong with that? Hubble's extraordinary. What did they find? What do they believe they have found, Corey? So this is an incredible set of detective work. So first, they're looking at the shadows of planets moving in front of distant stars. And these stars are between 150 and 1,000 light years away. It's about a million times as far away as Pluto, way outside our solar outside system. Outside our solar system and then Way, and, and then some, yeah. This is a, a long way out. They're looking at the shadow of the planet. Then they're looking at actually the light of the star going through the air around the planet and measuring the gases. So they're finding, it's like a shadow of a shadow of a shadow, looking for the traces of what's there, and then using it, using it to measure what are those planets like? What's the weather like? What are they they're made of? They're taking images, almost like a pixelated image, and they're putting it together like a puzzle. So could there be life then out there? Well, on these particular planets, th these planets are the ones that are easy to look at, and the ones that are easy to look at are actually the ones that are not great for life. They're, they're big, they're gassy, they're hot, but uh, we now know that there is water in these planetary systems. We know, you know, we we, not, we we know that now. We know that with pretty good certainty. So you know, we, we know it's there, we know how to look for it, and we're pretty sure there are other planets circling those same stars. And so there, are, there could be planets right nearby that we just haven't seen yet, and that's where the life could be. There could be planets right nearby that we just haven't seen yet, and that's where the life could be. Excuse me, you said we know how to look for it. I mean, that, that's a big change, even from just a couple of years ago. What would be next then, Corey? Well, so there are all kinds of great things coming. There's a, a new mission called TESS coming that's going to look for planets around closer stars that are easier to study. And there's a successor to Hubble called the James Webb Space Telescope, which is even bigger and even more sensitive. You put those two together, um, right now we can only see these, these kind of weird giant planets. Give me another five or ten years, and I might be back here telling you, oh, we found a planet that is the size of the Earth, the temperature of the Earth, and we know there's that, water. That, that is phenomenal. More to come then, clearly. Yeah, so uh, we we're about to crack some very, very big mysteries cool here. We we're about to crack some very, very big cool mysteries stuff. here. Thank you, Corey. The puzzle is together. <laughs> Almost. It's Corey coming Powell, together. Right on. In time. Watch ye, therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man.